in this uh, communion hour. We are so happy to have you there and also to be your servant, bringing forth the word of God to you. Today, we'll be looking at uh, the killer diseases, the forces that brings the giants down and crushes them. We'll be looking at these uh, killer diseases uh, and labor to uh, unravel the mysteries around uh, how they work against the children of God so that you can avoid it. If the virus is already there, God also will be uh, prescribing a way out for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are taking our scriptural journey from Second Corinthians chapter 11. If you are disposed to have your Bible with you, I would like us to watch and read Second Corinthians chapter 11. I'll be reading um, verses 3 and 4. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled it through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that comments preached another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Hmm. The first killer disease that can kill the zeal and zest of a Christian, that can kill the church, that is even killing the church. Is the disease of the scanty, scanty knowledge of God. I'd like you to note it very well, because I'm going to run. Just to give you a rundown of these uh, killer diseases, show them to you and then profile from spiritual scriptural solutions, okay? So we are beginning to discover the first killer disease. The scanty knowledge of God. The scanty knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. It is a killer disease. When we give our life to Jesus, we should be very, very careful and committed 
to do whatever we can by the grace of God available to gain depth. Again, I say depth. One of the biggest problems of uh, today's Christianity is the problem of uh, shallowness. Shallowness. Floating like foam on top of mighty ocean. Another problem is dissipation. Dissipation. The word of God and the truth you know about God, about Jesus, about heaven, about hell, about angels, about demons, about your faith in Christ. Not getting deep into the soil of your spirit is very dangerous. Little wind, little shaking, little push from seducers and seductresses, you are bound to fall and collapse. If you don't have depth, into the deep things of God, the knowledge of God. When the false preachers, and there are many of them nowadays, when they come your way and present another Jesus, another Jesus, have you seen it now? That there is another Jesus apart from the original Jesus that in attack the Church of Christ in Corinth and finished it to, to today. That there is no place, no way, nowhere we can lay our hands today and say, This was the church of Corinth. This same disease destroyed the church of Christ in Ephesus. This same disease destroyed the church of God, the church of Christ in Galatia. This same disease destroyed the church of God in Thessalonica. and destroy them completely that no trace of these churches can be found in our time. The killer diseases that can kill the zeal and the zest, the prayer life, the commitment of a child of God and uproot you from grace and land you into this place. It's when you begin to accept another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. I'm talking to you as a modern man, a modern woman, a 21st century Christian. Several Jesus they present to us today is not the Jesus of John Wesley. That's not the Jesus of Mother Teresa. That's not the Jesus of St. Augustine. That's not the Jesus 
of Ignatius and Athanasius. That's not the Jesus of Charles Grandson Finet. We now have another Jesus because of the scanty knowledge of God in you. You don't have enough dose and quantity of the knowledge of truth, knowledge of the holy, and knowledge of Christ in you. So we now go for another Jesus as the alternative. We now buy into uh, the supermarket of another spirit and what they are selling. That is why we have many people in the body of Christ in churches. In churches that could say, I am a Christian. Boy, he must have Can't you see that something is wrong? I am a Christian. Boy, he tells lies. She tells lies. I am a Christian. But he or she has not left the world alone. Yes, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. I'm talking to you from Nigeria, for instance. Here in Nigeria, we have British people here. We have Americans here. We have Ghanaians here in Nigeria. A Briton that is in Nigeria is not a, a Nigerian, but he or she is in Nigeria. Have you seen the difference? That's the way we should handle and be handling this world system. And that's why the devil is so fast in manufacturing another Jesus, which is a fake to the original Jesus that our fathers and our mothers taught that changed their lives inside and outside. That Jesus that made nations those days When John Wesley was here, John Bunyan was here, many breweries and tobacco companies closed down their factories and it was converted into Christian centers where children of God cluster to worship God. That kind of Jesus and the kind of Jesus we have on ground today are not the same. And it is so because we are too lazy to sit down on our own to face our Jesus and our Bible. So, the first problem, virus, killer disease, is the scanty knowledge of God. Go with me. To Jeremiah chapter 2. Verse 15. Jeremiah 2 15. And now we give you pastors. Have you seen it that? Genuine original pastors are gifts from God. But today, many charlatans have entered into priesthood because the Church of Jesus Christ and the work of God seem to be so lucrative now, so lucrative 
It is now uh, a money-making venture. Money-making venture. And so many people that God did not call now called themselves. Because of selfish interest and because of their belief. In the days of Jeremiah, God wanting to bless the nation of Israel, he said, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you. Have you seen it? Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, not with John. Not with John. We shall feed you with the original Jesus and feed you with the knowledge of what is cross deep for you at Calvary. And feed you with the knowledge of what should be your response. What should be your response? what Jesus Christ did for you and feed you with the knowledge and understanding of how you should carry your life day by day in this untoward heaven generation. So the biggest problem we have is lack of pastors from God's heart and hands. All of us that are preachers who are listening, may God forbid it. Hmm? And forbid it again. That you will be feeding God's people with another Jesus and another spirit that is not the Holy Spirit. And another gospel. Another gospel. Gospel of health and wealth. Health and wealth. Gospel of 21 steps. 7 steps. 11 steps. To making it. Gospel of making it. Even if Jesus Christ is not making it. We cannot make it. And then get out of the way. And probably go to hell. Pastors, I want to pray for you. May you become an answered prayer to the cry of your generation. Your generation is crying and praying. That God should raise genuine pastors who will become feeders. That we feed God's people, not with Jones, not with another Jesus, not with error, plastered with some chocolates. And God's children are licking it and are dying. May you become an answer prayer to the cry of your family. Again, may you become an answer prayer to the cry of your generation and the church of Jesus Christ. That's my prayers for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, I want to go away from this first killer disease to look at the second killer disease. But I want to be sure whether you have swallowed this one, this scanty knowledge of God. Let it sink into your spirit. Never you forget it. And so I counsel Begin to read your Bible by yourself. 
begin to discover the original Jesus by yourself. Be careful the kind of people you listen to. All that glitters may not be gold. All that shines, all of the chocolate, chocolate things we hear today, from many pulpits may be another Jesus that you are not looking for. You are not looking for that kind of Jesus. They might be dispensing one on Holy Spirit. And that's not what you are looking for. You are looking for Holy Spirit that will empower you to do exploits and make positive, godly, righteous, everlasting impact on people's lives before you leave this planet Earth. Be careful the kind of people you listen to. Be careful. So, marry your Bible. Study. Meditate. Give God quality time so that God will give you quality anointing. Always buy time. Always kill time in his presence. That's how our father did it. And they were loaded. Let me say with overdose of the knowledge of God. So nothing moved them. No pressure, no pleasure moved them. They were men of steadfast faith. They were bold because of what they ate and the kind of spirit they drank. The Holy Spirit. Having diagnosed and having shown you this disease, may God deliver you. Day by day, all the days of your life, from being partial God of the knowledge of God. Jesus name. Amen. The second killer disease is in James 1 3. James 1 verse 3. James chapter 1 verse 3. Knowing this, we are entering into the second killer disease, okay? I wish you are making notes. Jot down things. Knowing this, uh -huh, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. So, the second killer disease is your weak faith in Christ is a disease. Weakness of faith. Produces a weak Christian that cannot stand the test of time. I used to tell people, and I will tell you now, that the original Jesus, you know, Paul was talking about another Jesus. So now that we have another Jesus, let's look at the original Jesus, okay? He can survive anywhere. The original Jesus Christ, your faith in him will also help you and enable you to survive anywhere. The most primitive village. A man and a woman Who has a healthy faith will survive there. In the big 
biggest city on earth. The biggest city on earth. If your faith is held in it and sound, sound, faith in Christ, in Christ, not in your beauty, not faith in your talent and giftings. Everybody is a believer, but it depends on what you believe in. The difference between our beliefs, Christian belief and other believers, Christians believe in a person, Christ. Other believers believe in things, things, not in a person. That's the difference between these two beliefs. So you need to also check your belief, your belief system. You need to check where you have put your faith. Is it in your giftings? Is it in your talents? Is it in your abilities? Is it in your connections? Somebody you know? Somebody your son, your daughter knows? That is not Jesus Christ? Mm, that's a wrong application of faith. It's a wrong one. Knowing this, mm, that the trial of your faith work at patience. Can I remind you that till thy kingdom come, God tries men. But another Jesus does not teach you that God can try you. Another gospel does not teach that God tries people's feet. God does not tempt. How can a father tempt his own child with a live snake. No, 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 no. God cannot tempt you, but God tries you. Do you know why he does that? To be able to toughen your faith in him. To help your faith gain up roots. Strong up root in him. That's why he allows at times lack. It comes like fire to refine your faith the way gold is being refined. It is to toughen it. So that you can survive anywhere, survive in any season, even in the season of youthful exuberances and in the season of your oldest old age, you will still survive. In time and in eternity, you will still survive. Okay? So, no man, no woman with weak or weakened faith in Christ will survive. What the devil will be throwing at you and what the world system will be throwing at you. So, you better wake up and do something about this disease. Whatever you are passing through or you may be passing through in the future. If you are a child of God, I want to tell you that it is not actually devil at work. It is your father bringing those fires, not to consume you, but to refine your faith. Okay? Uh -huh. You cannot do exploits without the strongest faith you can be able to must and have. And then the trial of your faith is not a wasted trial, it worked patience. Patience does not come by laying of hands. This is another Jesus that today preachers, many of them, tries to present to you. It's not the original one. That one cannot give you patience. It does not come by laying of hands. 
You see, patience? You cannot get it from your quiet time. What quiet time will do is to prepare you against the days and times and seasons of trial so that you will not fail the exam. When the exams come, you will credit your paper. And then you move from patience. He said, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That you might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You can't receive anything from God except by faith. You can't do exploit except faith is there. And let me tell you how faith works. I wouldn't like to read the Bible. Let me just tell you the story. I believe some of you listening to me, you read your Bible at least a little. The other time Jesus came at the Sea of Galilee and saw boats. Is that clear? Okay. Jesus Christ met Peter and said, Anything, he said, nothing. We've not caught anything in this fishing business. He said, Okay. Cast your net at the right side of the boat. Peter made a statement. Peter said, We've toiled all night. And our number six, what we call number six here in Nigeria, that is human calculations. It is in the night that you can cut fishes. Now, the day, you know, has broken, and you are saying, I should cast my net here. We've tried. We didn't catch anything, he said. Satan now said, Nevertheless, that's how it works. He said, Nevertheless, at thy war, I will cast my net. Faith is not faith until the word of God has gone ahead of you. Go and study the Bible and see Abraham, the father of faith. How did he become the father of faith? The word of God came to him and went ahead of him. How? Abraham. Or Abraham, get thee out. That's the word of God. Abraham, get thee out. That's the word of God. If the word of God did not come, Abraham has no nowhere to launch his so called faith. It was the word of God that first of all came to him and gave him a base on which to launch his journey into greatness. I hope you are getting the point. Yes. The word of God. Get the out. Your father's country and land to a land that will show you and that will make you great and will become a great nation. Abba. The word of God has gone, which is the word of faith. The man believed it and it was counted unto him as righteousness. Somebody sang this and he said, God said, and I believe thee, that said to say, God said, and I believe thee, that said to say, if you are looking for the fruit of the world, go and wait for God. At his word, where he said, There shall be no barren in the land. It may delay, the vision may tarry. He said, Wait, the word of God cannot fail. You know, that's how to keep gingery and recharging your faith so that it, will, it won't go down. No man, no woman, I repeat. With weak faith can do this, God. I go away. I go away. From that second point. So the third point. 
the killer diseases. The third is your shallow conviction about what is right and what is wrong is very dangerous. When your conviction is shallow, you can't last. Little wind, little breeze, little flood will blow you away. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Shallow conviction. 4 verse 21. 4 verse 21. And being fully persuaded. Have you seen it? Our fathers were fully persuaded about their convictions. They were not shallowly persuaded. They were fully persuaded. Hey. That what he had promised, he was able to perform. To stop. That was what sustained them. And they became finishers. All of them that believed that was fully persuaded. All of them were finishers. Daniel, Nehemiah, Ezra, Joshua, Moses, David, all of Tarsus, named them. They were fully persuaded. Their convictions that this Bible is the word of God was very very deep so if anybody any preacher or people that are carrying another jesus and another spirit and another gospel up and down comes around them they can't move this one paul said none of these things moves me these are people that are fully persuaded number one that god called them And they are fully persuaded about what God called them to do. Like them, hate them. You can't confuse them. It is very, very dangerous to carry shallow convictions. Let your foundations and your roots be deepened in the truth of the word of God. Whatever you believe about the Bible and in the Bible and about Jesus and about God and about eternity, about eternal life, about hell, about demons, about angels, about life after death should not be shallow. Abraham was fully persuaded. He was. That what he promised what he had promised him, he was able also to perform. Mm. And therefore, that's verse 22, it was imputed to him for righteousness. It was imputed for him or to him for righteousness. God imputed him. God imputed, God put it in his account. And counted him a righteous one for believing, for believing, you know, that what God had promised, even though at 100 and something, I will still get it. Even if I did not get it and I die, God will still keep his promise. That was the extent, the percentage of his uh, persuasion and belief. Even if I did not get it, I did not see and I die. That what God promised he will do. He will perform. I think you are getting the point now. These are the killer diseases. Shallow conviction, weak faith, scanty knowledge of God. Point four. Point four. Uh, let me take you to Esther, book of Esther, uh, chapter 3, Esther chapter 3, 
verses 2 to 5. Two to five, Esther chapter three, two to five, and all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed. <laughs> they bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servant, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressed thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told him and to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. I'd like to show you verse 8. Let's jump. And read verse 2. And Haman said unto the king Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all, the, all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. Now, the fourth killer disease is. Your low standard of holiness is a killer disease. If your standard of holiness is low, you will not survive what the devil will be throwing at you, you will bow. Bowing here could mean compromise. When they press you daily, seducers, seductresses, deceivers, antagonists, idens, the occultists, satanists, haters of God, mockers, lovers of themselves. When they surround you day by day, they pressurize you and are saying there is a Haman. Bah! <laughs> Mordecai has said, I am a Jew. We don't bow to anything easy. No pressure bends up. Even when we change location, this is special, but we, don't, we won't bow. It's no longer our home country. It's not our home country, but we will not bow. Papa. These are people that touched the original God, not uh, another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit that we touch nowadays that makes us shake and quake on top of our military boots. That makes people feel, you know, uh, God's uh, Dodan Barak, but we are not soldiers. We are not. We are not. No standard of holiness. Don't joke with holiness. Holiness simply means being on the Lord's side. Side. Anytime, any place, anywhere, and then damning the consequences. That's holiness. That's my definition. Where God is standing, stand there and damn the consequences. Monica said say we won't bow. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow. Daniel refused to bow. These are radicals for Jesus. They said we won't bow. We will not bow to this image. Mordecai said we won't bow to this Haman. Every other person bowed to the pressure. Pressure. Hey, pressure was so much. They did the reverence. They bowed. Only Mordecai has true, and that's why today heaven is paying him tribute. That day looked like a joke. Today, heaven is paying Mordecai tribute. 
You need to do something about the standard of holiness you bear around. Let it be deep and deep in your spirit. Carry it anywhere you find yourself. Carry it to school. Carry it to the market. Carry it to the office where you work. Carry it to the airport. Carry it to the train station. Carry it to the market. Carry it to your home. Carry it into your marriage. High standard of holiness will surely help your life. It will. But low standard of holiness will bend you. Mordecai bowed not. But if you're the person bowed and did reverence to him, this singular man who was not dead in the knowledge of God, he carried strong, rugged, dogged faith in Christ to the land of Asia. He carried deep convictions. He was fully persuaded. And he carried a high standard of holiness. Amen. Point five, before we begin to pray. Um, Exodus 17. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17. The killer diseases, the fifth one. 17 of Exodus. Verse 7. Exodus 17, 7. Look at it. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah. Because of the tithing of the children of Israel, and because, look at it, they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Excuse me, at this particular point, chapter 17, what began in Genesis, they are still not sure. They are still in doubt ah, whether the living God was among them or not. Ah, ah. So, the problem of dim hope is this a killer disease. When your hope is so thin and dim, meaning you are not sure whether God is God. Meaning you are not so sure, you are not too sure whether the Bible is the word of God. You won't last in this race. Deceivers and seductresses and seducers will bend you and squeeze you and finish you. That's how they destroy the church of Christ in Corinth. You can't trace it again. Efficient church wiped away. Church in Laodicea, church in Tytira, church in Philadelphia, wiped away. All the warnings and caution Jesus sent John the Revelator to give to these churches to warn them. They ignored those diseases. Those diseases killed those churches and wiped them away. And that's why God is redigging it again. Showing it to you. Showing it to you. Excuse me. Is the Lord among us or not? I now say to myself, what is what's what, what's going on here? With their eyes, uh -uh. they have seen things and they have seen God work for them. First hand informations. No second hand. They've seen miracles, raw work. And God was still ready to do more. So, simply because uh, 
there was no water for the people to drink. Uh, maybe no job, mm, no fruitfulness yet, and you are now chiding Moses and uh, you are you are uh, uh, chiding error. And saying, "Give us water, or else we do." <laughs> and so that thing came from their mouth. They tempted the Lord, saying. Is the Lord among us or not? Excuse me. By now, you need to draw your conclusion about who God is and what God is capable of doing. Jesus confronted the Jews. He cautioned them about this disease. He said, you greatly err, not knowing the scripture. Nor the power of God. You see now these two things. So when we say knowledge is power, this is the kind of knowledge we not knowing the scriptures, nor the capability of God, what God is capable of doing. We are living in a generation of science and technology and electronics. A generation in which everybody now is a journalist, social media, and Google. A generation where Google is now God. Anything people want, they go to Google. Computer, the artificial wisdom. Google, the artificial wisdom. That's where we go to now. Excuse me, you need to, to, to seriously settle this matter in your heart. And settle it well because of the journey ahead of you. Is the living God among us or not? The living God is among us. The living God is in us. Can God be with a man and he does not have water to drink? Yes. God was with Abraham, yet he had no child until God's perfect time. And due time came. Every treatment God brings our way is coming from love. God is love. Anything He's doing, anything He allows, it might be pinching to the flesh, our human nature, but it is still love dealing with us, not hatred. You need to settle it once and for all. Job said He knows the way that. Or rather, I know the way he's taking me. That after he has tried me, at the end of the tunnel, I shall comfort as good, knowing that it was love dealing with him. Job knew that he was a child of God. Even though in the revelation, trance and the, all of that, Satan could be seen, demons could be seen, because you are a child of God, no sparrow falls on the ground without the notice and permission of your father. This should be your confidence. If you are still doubtful and confused about what is happening, it's because the Jesus Christ you receive may not be the original. You need to check. Check that Jesus again. Check that Jesus again. Sugar my ring. Tea, butter my bread. Yes. If he pleases, he can put sugar in our tea and plaster our bread with butter. He does that. He can do that. But let us allow him, let it be him doing it. I told you the other time, I said, only Christ can be a Christian. Did I not tell you? What God, what Christ is looking for from you is just accommodation, allowance. You can't be a Christian. Allow him, give him the accommodation. He's knocking at the door to enter into your life. He said, if any man, any woman opens, I'll come in and sup. Which is to say, he is the only guest that hosts himself. 
He's coming in with his own food. You are not the one to cook the food. He said, if anybody opens, I will come in and then sup. Eat with him. Eat with her. Can you now open your heart and your spirit right now? Open your will. Open up your soul, even your emotions. Open them up. Only Christ can love. Other things you try to do is love. You can't give what you don't have. It takes a Christian to love. It takes a Christian to forgive. It takes a Christian to pray. It takes a Christian to read Bible and understand Bible. It takes a sound, genuine Christian to preach the goodness of Jesus to others. Even in the face of oppositions and persecution. And when you look intently into the life of that Christian, you will see that this is Christ in him doing this thing. I want to leave this point here for today. And release you here for today. God willing next week. I have them up to 10 points here. I think 10 points. And I've just given you, I think, five. The killer diseases. I want to stop here for today. Did you learn anything? Did you? That can help your life, Christian life? Did you learn anything? Then, receive grace to put them into practice. I watch these things also in my own life. I check it, I watch it. What's the standard of the holiness that I carry? Can I survive in Babylon? Yes, Jesus can survive in, even in the worst ghettos. Jesus can survive in the airport. Jesus Christ can survive entering into sites in the net, picking what is good and then coming out. Jesus Christ can survive. In any city and in any primitive village, in any school, in any office, unless it is not the Jesus of Nazareth that you receive, unless it is not Christ crucified, who rose from the dead, that is living in you. Be careful not to be carrying about another Jesus. Another spirit that came into your life via another gospel that was not the kind of gospel that St. Paul taught, that St. Paul preached, that Barnabas preached to Paul, that Peter preached in the house of Cornelius. What kind of Jesus is this that is in you? And you are so hot tempered, your temperament is not tempered, your sexual appetite is not tempered. What kind of Jesus is this that did not change your life in total? What kind of Jesus is this that is lasting and is so unforgiving? What kind of Jesus is this? I'd like you to briefly pray and then I will also briefly pray for you. Why not talk to God? Let this communion hour, this message become like ultrasound to check you up. Beyond the surface, beyond the activities that we do, maybe in the churches, Beyond how we carry ourselves religiously, beyond that, let us diagnose your case and, 
an issue beyond the scale. Let's go deep. Are you fully persuaded that God is able to perform the healing he promised you? Are you fully persuaded? Are you about to bow? To go to Egypt to pick some cucumber and garlic and then you return? No. One of the killer diseases where your hope is deep, where you are not sure, where your life is hanging in doubt, whether the living God is among you because there is no water presently and currently for you to, to, to drink. God, there is no job. Is that why you want to kill yourself? Is that why you are so sarcastic at anybody and everybody now? Remember. Remember, Jeremiah. God said he will use you as a pastor after his own heart. And give you as a gift to your generation. Have you forgotten that? That's the job. Said I will give you a pastor. I will make you pastor. Give you a pastor. I will make you a pastor. After my own heart. We shall feed. You are going out to feed other people. So open up your spiritual power. And feed on the knowledge of God. Feed on the fear of God. Feed on the power of God. Feed on the truth of God. Feed on the light of God. Feed on the revelations of God and revelations of our Lord Jesus. Why not pray and say, Father, help me. You. If God allows, if God allows, next week we'll be looking at how to cure this things. What kind of injection, what kind of spiritual tablet do I need to take to be able to do away with this thing? Father, thank you. I pray for your children who are always there every Monday to, to, to drink and to eat this bread. Father, bless them. I pray that all the areas where the knowledge of God is hunting them, that you shall reopen the pump. Reopen the tap, the tap, the tap of your knowledge. Let it begin to flow again. Not knowledge about physics or chemistry or knowledge about law or knowledge about Yahoo or knowledge about the uh, computer. Or knowledge of God, knowledge of Christ, knowledge of truth. Father, reopen the tap, even the taps for your children in the name of Jesus. As they will begin to read their Bible, meditate their Bible, study their Bible, let the fountains of revelations open unto them without bound, without boundaries in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you shall take away the convictions of your people from superficiality and superfluity of nothingness into the deep things of God. I pray that after today you shall take away their conviction from shallowness. From shallowness. From shallowness. From being cosmetical. To become deepened in the deep things of God. Do it for me in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you shall please sharpen their hope. That their hope in Christ shall not be beclouded. Shall not be beclouded by doubt, by confusion. Deal with seducers who are trying to seduce them and seductresses and deceivers. Father, deal with them, rebuke these deceivers for their sake. Day by day, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. I bring healing to your head. I bring healing to your zeal. I bring healing again to your prayer life. I pray that God will come from his uh, pharmaceutical store and give you spiritual injections that will deal with these viruses. That these viruses will die 
in your life that your faith will not be weak anymore. Let God give you fresh oxygen. Even your career, let that be healed. Let God heal your career. Heal your marriages. Heal your hopes in Him. Heal your now and heal your future in Christ Jesus. I pray that the Lord Jesus shall heal your ministry. All of you that are preachers, I pray that God will sharpen and sharpen the cutting edges of your mantle. And the cutting edges of your mantle shall not be blocked. Especially in a time like this. I pray that your trigger shall not fail you. And I pray that bullets shall not finish your gun. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May God protect your going out, your coming in, your sitting down, your lying down. Let God delegate the angel of favor to always minister to you. May God favor you. May the land you march upon favor you. May the air you breathe favor you. May the showers you take favor you. And all of them, let all things, all things, all things work together for your good. Work together for your maturity. Work together for your promotion and for your growth in Christ Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name, I have blessed you. Amen. God bless you. Uh, God willing, next week, I will also be here to fellowship with you. He dead, remain rapturable. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by these instructions. For further inquiries or counsel, please contact Vale of Ibon Seed Time and Harvest Revival Labels, Ogidi, Anambra State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 081 00 950 123 or 081 02 46 1720 or 081 157 606 73. Email more sure word of prophecy at yahoo.com. Gmail more sure word of prophecy 77 at gmail.com. Website www.veilofhebron.com May the Lord grant you grace to walk in the light of the truth you have received in Jesus' name. Amen.